Aha, I'm a resistor. Why can I only move in only one direction? I feel like I'm currently flowing through a diode. What is a diode? I'm glad you asked. With your daily dose of cringe fulfilled, we can start acting like adults. But yes, today we will be talking about diodes. Up until now, all components with two contacts were polarity agnostics. Resistors, inductors or capacitors don't care which way the current flows. Diodes break this tradition. With diode, current can only flow in one direction. Let's build a simple circuit to show what I mean. The circuit will be very simple, just red pitaya's output generating a sine wave at plus minus 1 volt, a diode connected to the signal generator and two probes connected to either end of the diode. Let's not even pay attention to anything else for now. And here it is, the screen capture. You can clearly see the diode acts as a conductor in one direction and as an insulator in the other. Let's ignore the elephant in the room, that is the fact that traces don't really match up in either direction and move on. Diodes have a dedicated electrical symbol. Most common is an arrow with a straight line. Different kinds of diodes, and yes, there are different kinds, have corresponding symbols that are variations on that design. Besides the first one, you will commonly encounter Schottky and Zener diodes. Arguably, the most famous of all diodes are light-emitting diodes, better known as LEDs. The fact that they emit light is mirrored in their symbol. There, you can see a pair of errors exiting the classic diode symbol. There are even more diodes, but we won't discuss them in this video. Aside from having different symbols, diodes also come in a wide variety of packages. This doesn't mean that specific diodes have specific packages, though LEDs can usually be recognized by their package. Diodes usually have a straight line somewhere on the package. This straight line corresponds to the line seen in the electrical symbol. This node is known as the cathode or the negative end. The positive end is called anode. Quick recap. Diodes have two nodes and they conduct electricity only in one direction. That means only when they are correctly polarized. The co correct polarization of the diode is in direction of the arrow. Arrow goes from the positive anode to the negative cathode. The way I remember this is through a simple mnemonic device. Positive anode, negative cathode or shortly punk. Punk rock fans will definitely know what I'm talking about. Now back to the packages. So cathodes are marked with a straight line, but what if there is no line? That is very common with LEDs. Those have two distinctive markings. The negative lead cathode is shorter and the plastic bulb has a flat side on the cathode. With that out of the way, let's get back to the elephant in the room, that is why traces on the oscilloscope look like this. If diodes block current in one direction, but conduct electricity in the other, shouldn't psi wave be rectified? Shouldn't it be zero in negative phase and the same as input in the positive one? Well, yes. Yes, but... Diode's characteristics look more like this. Diode doesn't really behave as I told you before, they actually block current in reverse direction until they reach reverse breakdown voltage. 
This voltage is usually selected to be higher than expected reverse voltage. In much the same fashion, diodes don't really conduct electricity in forward direction until they reach the forward voltage. This voltage is a lot lower than the reverse breakdown voltage. It is about 0.7 volts for classical diodes, 0.4 volts for Schottky diodes, and over 2 volts for LEDs. When solving circuits with diodes, we usually just assume that voltage drop across the diode is exactly the same as its forward voltage. We will now measure forward voltages of a few LEDs and measure how much current is flowing through them. But before that, I have some bad news. Or good ones, depends on how much you like op-amps. Let me just fetch one. Here's why we need them. Red pita can only output voltage at 1V amplitude. LEDs have a much higher forward voltage and wouldn't even light up. That means we have to amplify red pita's signal and we will solve that by using a non-inverting amplifier at 3 times mode. So let's build it and make some measurements. Actually, I pulled the cooking show one on you and pre-build the circuit. Here it is. For those playing along, you can find the schematics in the documentation, link is in the description. One thing I would like to point out is that op-amp is powered from 5V and minus 4V rails. This means that the output will be clipped in the negative direction. But since LEDs don't conduct in the negative direction, this won't bother us. Let's add a 100 ohm resistor to the circuit and an LED. Don't forget to connect LED's cathodes to the ground so that current can actually flow through the diode. The 100 ohm resistor's function is twofold. It acts as a current limiting resistor so that we don't fry the LED and it also acts as a shunt resistor. This means we can use it to measure current flowing through the LED. We just have to measure the voltage drop and divide it by the resistance. With that said, connect red pita's input probes to the two ends of the shunt resistor and let's move over to the computer. As usual, inputs must be in 10 times mode. We will also add an output, this time triangular plus minus 1 volt. That will translate into plus minus 3 volts and let's see what happens. First thing that you should notice is clipping in the negative voltages, as we discussed before. The other thing is that both traces match for the most part, but at around 1.6 volts. Yellow trace falls behind the green one. This corresponds with diode's characteristics. To make current measurement easier, let's add a math function. To measure the difference between the two inputs that corresponds to the voltage drops across resistor. And here we go, we can compare different diodes. Different LEDs have different forward voltages and different currents flow through them. This now is a green LED and this is for a white one. So there you go, a quick introduction to diodes. What they are, how they look and how to use them. On that note, do you think there is a way easier way to measure a current flowing through a diode? Is there a way how we could measure this using only one oscilloscope probe? But this we will leave for future videos. Until then, like, share and subscribe. Bye!